Welcome to Second Recapped. The film begins with a daily cash flow of hundreds of millions of dollars in Los Angeles, as well as the existence of organized criminals employing current heist methods, necessitating the usage of a money transfer intermediary organization. Fortico is one of the industry's leaders, with 12 armored vehicles transporting millions of dollars per day for private banks, casinos, and large-scale retail shops. Even though each truck is guarded by two to three well-trained men, having this amount of money in your truck makes guarding it quite dangerous. A disguised armed gang emerges out of nowhere on a typical workday at this company and stops one of the trucks. Guards become agitated and attempt to reverse, but they are hit from behind and become trapped before they can act. Robbers use a milling cutter to gain entry and a flashbang to make security guards disoriented. Then they're hauled out of the car and informed that if they obey the commands, they'll live, but they're both shot to death after a few seconds. After that, a teenager and another person are shot, and the entire gang flees the scene after receiving the money. A few months later, we meet Patrick Hill, a quiet British man with an impassive demeanor who's come to the Fortico for an interview. Considering his impressive work history at Delta Orange Security Company, he appears to be an experienced person who has no trouble being accepted. Then he meets Bullet, a friendly family man who's going to put him through some physical and skill tests. Bullet gives Patrick a nickname, H, and from now on, we'll call him by this nickname thanks to him. Then he tells him that he needs to score at least 70% to pass. H receives an exact 70% after 8 hours of varied shooting, driving, and fitness exams and barely makes it through. In the locker room, Bullet introduces H to the rest of the staff, dozens of guys, plus one lady named Dana, who also seems and acts like a man. Given that H is a novice, one of the arrogant guards, Dave, begins to tease him. However, he discovers that the silent man has a sharp tongue, rendering him speechless. Yes, yeah, small hands. Makes me very popular, and you look good. H travels to the armory to get his gun for the first mission, but he is also treated poorly. Passing through several gates, he runs into Sticky John, the always-behind-the-glass man from the control room. Like the others, but in a symbolic way, Sticky sticks his fingers in his mouth and expresses his welcome to H as well. On the first day of work, he gets into a truck with his favorite colleague Dave. He tries to scare H away from work by describing how two guards were killed that day, but he doesn't even bat an eye for it. They then go to Bank of America to pick up $2 million in cash. Dave takes every opportunity to humiliate H, but he doesn't get a response. After work, he joins the rest of the staff for billiards and beer. But first, he takes a few seconds to closely examine their identification cards. In the gathering, Sticky is informed by colleagues that the new employee might have taken his position because their boss likes him. Initially, he doesn't buy it, but when he notices they all agree on that, he approaches him to discuss it. He insults H to get his attention but the latter simply gives him a few bucks for a beer and ditches him by making sure he drinks it somewhere else. The next day, Dave and H are in the truck, while Bullet has gone to deliver a 10 grand drop, but it takes longer than usual. Dave tries to contact him, but realizes that he's being held hostage, which causes his entire fake personality to fall apart and be replaced by a coward who is completely disabled. Dave suggests leaving right away, but H refuses and calmly says that he won't abandon Bullet. To save him, they are eventually taken to a quiet area, and get surrounded by robbers. One pick up in front to monitor the robbery by gang leader, and another in back to transport the money. Robbers put Bullet in gunpoint and order them to throw the cash in the pickup's flatbed. He asks Dave to stay inside and not interfere, and then goes to carry out the instructions. He begins tossing cash bags into the pickup, but intentionally drops one of them to the ground. This incident makes the leader so angry that he harshly sings Rockstar again in Dave's ears. In the meantime, one of the robbers gets out of the pickup to warn H. So, he apologizes and then surprises the robber with a precise shot in the head. With the speed and accuracy of a dangerous killing machine, H gets out of the truck and kills each of the robbers with just a single bullet. However, the gang leader escapes into one of the nearby buildings and makes H follow him. He shoots the fleeing gangster in both legs knocking him down and then demands to know his boss. But the injured man insults him by asking him to have an inappropriate thing. Did you like poo, poo Which results in his instant death later on, he is questioned by two FBI agents, who are particularly interested in finding out how he managed to shoot the robbers so precisely, despite his average accuracy in the pre-assignment course. 
After some investigation, they realize that H is a dangerous criminal who they've been tracking for 25 years, but when they discuss the matter with their superior, they're oddly told not to take any action. Soon after, H meets a woman named Christy, who hands him an envelope containing Portico's personnel records, photos of Dana's family, an autopsy report on a murder case, and leaves the place without any further words. The next day at work, everyone behaves differently. They hold the door open for him, admire his courage in person, and even applaud him. The movie jumps forward three months later. H and Bullet are together for another workday, and they're abruptly stopped by another armed gang. This time the robbers blind their sights with paintball guns and try to get them out by clogging all the outlets and making a gas chamber. Bullet quickly gives up, but H covers his face with a cloth and gets out of the back door, stands there, glaring at the gangsters as they threaten him. They order him to get down, but instead all he does is show them his face, which is enough for them to turn tail and flee in fear. In the office and after the incident, Dana's hormones finally start working properly and she asks H to have a drink together but it seems like the drink was just the beginning and they ended up in her bed. H wakes Dana and summons her to the next room. He gives Dana 10 seconds to explain about the 125 grand that he found in her house. She doesn't take the matter seriously, so he starts shooting a couple times next to her to make her understand how serious the situation is. With anxiously twinkling eyes, Dana tells him that she stole the money during a transfer and put it aside for her retirement but H finds this hard to believe and accuses her of collaborating with an insider in Fortico. He also shows her photos of her parents that he had received earlier and assures her that if she's found to be an intruder, she won't be the only one who suffers. The movie then flashes back to five months ago, where H and his son Dougie, who's come to Los Angeles for vacation, are heading to a game. At the same time, he receives a call from Mike, who appears to be one of the previous robbers. The conversation reveals that H is the head of a massive armed robbery gang, and Mike is also one of his trusted men. Since nobody is around, he asks the boss to assist them with the observation process for one of the robberies they intend to carry out. H and his son go to the location. Mike wants him to report the route of one of Forico's trucks, which he simply does, but before Mike and his men can do anything, the same truck gets robbed by another armed group, which is the same robbery we initially saw. One of the robbers lays Dougie face down on the ground and points a gun at him. He repeatedly hears gunshots, so he raises his head in terror to look around. But this is the last thing he sees, and he gets killed tragically. When H notices this, rushes to him filled with rage and sadness. But he's also been shot several times by his son's killer. H has fallen down motionless with his eyes open, and all he's trying to see is the face of the man who shot his son. He loses one-fifth of his blood. But three weeks later, after three operations and removing six bullets out of his body, he miraculously regains consciousness. He instantly goes to his contact in the FBI and asks him information about the robbery. Unsurprisingly, the contact is none other than the same man we met earlier, and he tells him that it was a clean job, and the robbers didn't leave anything behind. Instead, he gives him a list of criminals who may be linked to them. From that point forward, H and his men begin a massive purge. They go to everyone on that list and either kill them or severely torture them. Many nasty businesses are uncovered that were hidden even from the bureau, but not the one that boss is looking for. Tired of searching in vain, H goes to London and meets Christy, who gives him a fake identity as Patrick Hill with all the necessary identification cards, tax information, and employment history. By presenting his brand new Irish-British identity, he's able to get a job at Fortico and look for an insider between them as a clue to find the real murderer. Now it's come to light that when he was staring at their ID cards, he was stealthily taking pictures, and when he was handing Sticky the money, he was stealing his. He also gave these to Christy so he could get their full personnel files. The movie flashes back to before the robbery, but this time to the location where the robbers are. They are retired Middle East veterans who were commanded by Sergeant Jackson, whom they still have a special respect for. Due to being away from the battlefield, none of them are in a good situation, financially and mentally. So, they make the decision to get into robberies, and they start by breaking into the house of a wealthy man. At the first job, they don't make much money, and Dougie's killer Jan, who has a stubborn and carefree demeanor, starts accusing Jack of defrauding others. But the other guys support Jack and defend him, causing Jan to back off. The next time they rob a truck belonging to Ethan's security company. They put on a more professional and organized performance, and by cutting out the middleman and working with an insider, they're able to get away with $1.2 million. 
However, Jack, who is now the head of a well-armed organized gang, warns them and particularly advises Jan not to draw attention by making unnecessary expenses. On Jack's next birthday, he reveals his new project, which is supposed to bring them a total of $6 million, and the soldiers who are eager for a mission, begin training and reconnaissance until the promised day arrives. Oh, it's getting harder and harder. Back to the robbery day from a different perspective with more details, they notice H's car, but they don't think it might be a problem. When the truck finally shows up, they quickly stop it and use an excavator to raise its back so it cannot reverse. Jan pulls the guards out of the truck and points a rifle at them, telling them they'll live if they follow his orders. But one of the guards attempts to shoot him with a pistol, which he misses and causes both to be killed by Jan. Seeing this, Jack gets extremely enraged with him, but he immediately shoots Dougie as well, just because his mask came down and the kid saw his face. H is rushing to his son when the group notices him. Jack orders to shoot him in the legs, but Jan does the opposite and goes for the torso. The entire group is incensed at Jen for his actions, but they can do nothing but take the money and leave. A few months later, in the present, the entire team gathers again, while Jan is still being blamed by everyone. Jack begins presenting the new robbery, one that could either retire them forever or result in their death. This time, the sergeant has his sights set on a much larger prize. The Fortico's Depot, where an estimated $150 million will be held on Black Friday. Everyone present is enthused by the number and afraid of the consequences. They don't hold back though because they are confident in their abilities as members of a military-trained gang and that they have a good insider. They come up with a meticulous and detailed plan, anticipating all potential intruders and happenstances, and after eight weeks of preparation and reconnaissance, the day of the big heist finally arrives. Bullet and H are on their way back to the depot when suddenly Bullet gets very frank and tells the latter that he is an insider who is collaborating with some robbers, who are going to attack the depot today. Bullet also let him know that he has unloaded his gun and asks him to not play hero today, and let the robbers do their job, in exchange for his life. H has finally found the right person after months of searching, so he doesn't want to lose the chance to meet with his son's killer too, and that's why he reluctantly accepts Bullet's offer. At Jack's house, he says goodbye to his wife with a long warm hug and then heads to Jan's place. Seeing his apartment and his luxury motorcycle, Jack gets furious with him, for attracting unwanted attention by purchasing this kind of pricey stuff, and tells him to prepare for the robbery, which is not well received by him. Bullet and H are en route to the abandoned warehouse, where they will meet the robbers. Bullet disables the truck's cameras, but Sticky John in the control room notices it right away. So, he gives the robbers four minutes to board, they show up with ballistic helmets and all-black heavily armored suits that make them almost impenetrable. The sergeant takes H out of the truck, ties his hands, and with a humiliating slap in the face, tells him that if he is a good boy today, he'll be able to see tomorrow. He gives a cold stare in response and gets back into the truck, but this time with four robbers behind him. After that, they can easily enter the depot without anyone noticing. All the staff are taken aback as the robbers slowly exit the truck. By holding H hostage, they can enter the safe without firing a single shot and disarm all the guards. H is also thrown to the ground, and they now have official control of the safe. After that, the three of them take Bullet as a hostage and try to enter the control room. Sticky sounds the danger alarm and makes the men in the armory aware of the robbers' presence. The armory staff use their long guns to turn the area into a battleground, although their bullets don't penetrate the robbers' fully ballistic suits. Robbers blow up the gate in trance and manage to get in. Then they horribly massacre everyone inside, except Sticky John, who reluctantly surrenders. By accessing the control room, they quickly open the entrance gate for their superior, and at the same time, they also notice that one of them has been seriously injured. The SWAT team is alerted by one of the guards. But since it takes them eight minutes to arrive and the robbers are emptying the safe right now, another guard makes the decision to take them by surprise. Although this results in his immediate death, it gives H the opportunity to use their distraction to shoot one of the guards in the leg, and then choke him to death. He then puts on the dead robber's helmet to blend in, comes out of the safe, instantly kills another one, and places a phone in one of the bags. Robbers notice him from the cameras, so they begin looking for him. Dave and his supervisor are hiding in a room when one of the robbers walks in. Dave instinctively begins shooting him, but just a shot from the other side is enough for him to fall to the ground. H appears out of nowhere and begins shooting the robber. 
Even though his helmet is damaged, he has the upper hand since the man has run out of ammo. So, he ambushes the man and kills him with his own knife. Dana and another guard start shooting at the remaining three robbers. Seeing the situation, Sergeant signals Bullet to come out of his role and give them a hand. Therefore, he goes to his friends, and after taking a gun and thanking them, he ruthlessly shoots them both in the head. H and Dave, who are still alive thanks to his vest, engage in a massive shootout with the robbers. The injured robber is killed by Dave, and another one gets seriously hurt by H. However, Bullet suddenly appears and starts shooting him, which stops him right away. Bullet then goes to Dave, tricks him to get out of the cover, and kills him just like the others. H is injured and is staring at Jan once more, as he's escaping along with Bullet and Jack. Two cruisers block the entrance gate, but they manage to easily punch through them and successfully make their getaway. They are being closely pursued by police and the SWAT team, while Jack is severely injured in the neck. However, they stick to the plan, go inside a building, and use remote parking poles to stop them there. The building has access to an underground tunnel that leads to an exit that hasn't been on any map since 1957, and they want to use it to disappear. After the first stop, Jack feels Jan's threat and attempts to kill him while he's fainting. But Jan outruns him and puts a sticky end to his life by slitting his artery. He then does the same to Bullet and disappears alone with the entire $150 million in his possession. While relaxing in his flat after a hard day, the sound of a phone ringing can be heard coming from one of the suitcases. Just as he is ready to react, H appears, hands him his son's autopsy report, and forces him to read it out. The report details where the gunshots struck. The liver, lungs, spleen, and heart are all involved. So, in a novel kind of retribution, H begins carefully blasting those specific organs in Jan's body, and after the final shot in the heart, he limps out of the area while his FBI companion cleans up the wreckage. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel out.